Water vapor enters a nozzle at 400 degrees Celsius and 800 kilopascal with the velocity of 10 meters per second. It leaves at 300 degrees Celsius and 200 kilopascal. During this process, heat is lost at a rate of 25 kilojoules per second. For an inlet area of 800 square centimeters, determine the velocity and volumetric flow rate of the steam at the nozzle exit. We begin this problem with the appropriate illustration. So we are told that we have a nozzle. So we begin with a diagram of a nozzle. And let's indicate state point 1 as the inlet and state point 2 as the exit. Uh, we're told that it's water, so let's just put an H2O on the diagram for illustration. Um, we're given the inlet conditions, so the temperature at the inlet is given as 400 degrees C, and the pressure at the inlet is also given as 800 kilopascal. Um, we're also given the velocity at the inlet, so V1 is given as 10 meters per second. At the exit side, we're given an exit temperature T2 of 300 degrees Celsius and an exit pressure P2 of 200 kilopascal. Um, we're also told that we're losing heat from this nozzle at the rate of 25 kilojoules per second. So let's show the heat transfer. Now it's a rate that's given us, so this is Q dot. And since it's heat that's lost, it's negative. So minus 25 kilojoules per second as the rate of heat loss. We're also given the inlet area. So A1 is 800 square centimeters. Um, 800 square centimeters is the same as 800 times 10 to the minus fourth square meters. So we are going to have to convert eventually into square meters. So this is 0 0.08 meters squared. Now we're also going to illustrate what we're trying to find. So we're trying to find the velocity at the exit. So we'll indicate V2 as one of our unknowns. And we're also trying the volumetric flow rate, so V dot at 2 is the other one of our unknowns. So this is an illustration of the problem setup. Now clearly this is a single stream steady flow process, so we'll just put SSSF. Um, additionally, it's a nozzle, it's a passive device, there's no work associated with this process. So we'll indicate W dot is equal to 0 for this particular process. Um, additionally, there's no information given about the uh, height of the nozzle, uh, although we would assume that the inlet and the exit are the same. So let's just note that there's no change in the potential energy, so delta PE is equal to 0. Um, let's also note that we're talking about steam, so our data is going to eventually come um, from table A4, 5, and 6. And we're not sure exactly which one at the beginning, although we know it's water vapor at the inlet, so clearly that's going to be A6, superheated steam. At the exit, we're not really sure yet. Um, anyway, this is the setup. Now, the first law of thermodynamics is also going to have to be illustrated. So, first law. And in single stream steady flow processes, written as a rate equation, we're just going to write Q dot minus W dot equals M dot, and then times the enthalpy change plus the change in the specific kinetic energy. So I'll just write this as delta Ke plus the potential energy. Now, again, we've noted that there's no change in potential energy. Uh, we're noting that there's no work for this process. Um, and we'll note also that the kinetic energy change is just one half times v2 squared minus v1 squared. So let's rewrite this equation. So we have q dot equals m dot times h2 minus h1 plus v2 squared minus v1 squared over 2. 
Now, if we look at this problem, um, we'll notice that we do have the velocity at the inlet. We do have two independent intensive properties, both at inlet and at exit. So we can find, given the pressure and temperature at the inlet and the exit, we can find the enthalpies. Um, the heat transfer rate is given. Um, one thing we don't have, however, is the mass flow rate. So we're also going to need an equation for the mass flow rate. Um, let's just recall that mass flow rate is equal to the velocity times the area divided by the specific volume. Now, we know the velocity at the inlet, so let's use the inlet conditions in order to find the mass flow rate. Now, hopefully you can see that we can solve this problem. Um, we, again, have the inlet state, so we can find the specific volume at 1. We're given the velocity in the area at the inlet, so this allows me to find the mass flow rate. Um, the only other unknown in this problem, therefore, is the exit velocity, and we'll use the first law for that. Um, additionally, we're trying to find the volumetric flow rate at the exit. So let's recall, too, that volumetric flow rate is really nothing more than the mass flow rate times the specific volume. We're trying to find V dot 2, so we're going to use the mass flow rate times the specific volume at 2. Um, recall that this is steady flow, so the mass flow rate in is equal to the mass flow rate out. Clearly, we're not accumulating or destroying any mass within the system, so that remains constant. All right, so now we have the ability to solve this problem. So let's continue. Here we have property data. So at T1 and P1, um, we'll go into the thermodynamic property table, A6, the superheated steam tables. And we need two things. We need the specific volume at 1, and we need the enthalpy. So from our tables, we find that the specific volume is 0.38429. And this is in meters cubed per kilogram. And the enthalpy is 3267.7. And this is in kilojoules per kilogram. Um, additionally, we're going to need our conditions at 2. Um, so at T2 and P2, uh, again, we would find uh, by looking at this that this is superheated steam. So again, we're going to A6. And once again, we need the specific volume and the enthalpy. So V2 is 1.31623 meters cubed per kilogram. And H2 is 3072.1. And this is in kilojoules per kilogram. So this is the property data that we need to finish up the problem. And now it's really just a matter of plugging all the data into our equations above and getting the result. So why don't we just start with the mass flow rate? So from the equation above, the mass flow rate, uh, we have the vo velocity, we have the area. Those are both given. We have the specific volume. If we plug in that data, we'll find that we have 2.082 kilograms per second. Um, additionally, now that we have the mass flow rate, we can go back up to our first law. And solve for that. So Q dot is given as minus 25 kilojoules per second. Again, there's no work. Um, the mass flow rate is 2.082 kilograms per second. Um, let's plug in our enthalpy change terms. So 3072.1 minus the enthalpy 3267.7. And then we add to this the kinetic energy change. So V2 is our unknown. So V2 squared. Um, V1 is given in the problem statement. So that's 10 meters per second, which is also squared. We have to divide this by 2. Um, additionally, we're going to need a conversion factor. I mean, we're going to have to convert from meters squared per second squared into kilojoules per kilogram. So in the SI system of units, that conversion is just 1,000. Just look in the inside back cover of your textbook for that. Um, so this is going to be meter squared per second squared 
per kilojoule per kilogram. Okay. And the only unknown is V2. So we just solve this and we end up with the exit velocity of 606 meters per second. And then lastly, we have to find the volumetric flow rate. So again, the volumetric flow rate is just the mass flow rate times the specific volume at 2. Um, if we plug these numbers in from above, we end up with 2.74 cubic meters per second. So, problem is done.